Democracy Redefined, History of the Parliament Channel. The road to establishing the Parliament Channel began in 1989 when a Joint Select Committee of Parliament was appointed to consider and report on all aspects relating to the broadcasting and televising of the proceedings of Parliament. The committee was established by separate motions passed by the House of Representatives on the 28th of April 1989 and in the Senate on the 2nd of May 1989. The first meeting of this committee was held on May 23rd of that year. House Speaker at that time, the Honorable Nizam Mohammed, was unanimously elected as the chairman. The committee reviewed precedents from other Commonwealth parliaments where televising of proceedings had been introduced, namely the parliaments of the United Kingdom, Canada and India. At that time, special arrangements were made from time to time for the live coverage of specific parliamentary events by the then Trinidad and Tobago Television or TTT. These included the inauguration of a new parliament, the ceremonial opening of each session of parliament, and the annual budget presentation by the Minister of Finance, the response by the Leader of the Opposition, and the wind-up by the Minister of Finance. Subsequently, the 1989 committee suggested 13 guidelines to regulate broadcast coverage, which included Coverage should reflect a full appreciation of parliamentary proceedings, that is to say, the aims and objectives of bills or motions and arguments for and against them. Wide-angle shots of the chamber may be used from time to time. Journalists representing the electronic media should be mindful of what is relevant to the business under consideration by the House. It is only such relevant material that is intended for public information. Proceedings filmed are to be used only for reports of such proceedings and on no other occasion except with the express permission of the presiding officer. The committee went on to stress that the main reason for the televising of parliamentary proceedings is to promote public education and civic consciousness, while at the same time to protect and enhance the dignity of the Houses of Parliament. The topic of live broadcast of parliamentary proceedings was again broached by then Opposition Senator Roy Cabuena in 1993 at the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association Conference. At a panel discussion, there was heated debate with the then government senator, Camille Robinson Regis, on the topic television media coverage and parliament, chaired by a British MP delegate at that session. At a sitting of the Senate on November 4, 2003, a private motion brought by Senator Professor Amish Diosaran read, Be it resolved that the government arrange, with appropriate permission, for full debates and the business of both houses to be transmitted to the public through the electronic media, television and radio, in an equitable and discreetly edited form on fixed days of the week and with such transmission to begin before the end of the year 2003. Be it further resolved that a joint select committee of parliament be appointed to consider and report on this matter so as to facilitate government action. Amendments were made and at a sitting of the Senate on the 3rd of February 2004, the motion that was agreed to by the Senate included the appointment of a joint select committee to deal with this matter. At the sitting of the Senate on February 10th, Senator Joan U. Williams moved a motion to appoint six Senate members to serve on the Joint Select Committee. They were Mr. Danny Montano, Ms. Christine Kangaloo, Mr. Mustafa Abdul Hamid, Mr. Robin Montano, Mrs. Carolyn C. Passat Bechan, and Mrs. Mary King. And at a sitting held on Friday, March 5, 2004, the House of Representatives agreed to the same resolution and appointed the following six members to serve on that Joint Select Committee. Dr. Keith Rowley, Mrs. Camille robinson Regis, Mrs. Eudine Job davis Mr. Edward Hart, Mr. Ganga Singh, and Dr. Rudal Munilal. Dr. Keith Rowley would be appointed chairman. As part of the process of deliberation, the committee sought the views of various stakeholders. At a meeting on May 4, 2004, one representative each from the Trinidad Guardian, Radio Toco, and the National Broadcasting Network was in attendance. Discussions at this meeting were followed up by written submissions from the Media Association of Trinidad and Tobago, Trinidad Guardian, and the Government Information Service. Suggestions were also sought from the Clerk of the House, the Clerk of the Senate, and the Information System Specialist of the Parliament at a meeting of the committee held on May 18, 2004. The committee also reviewed documentation on the precedents set in other Commonwealth Parliaments where proceedings of Parliament were televised, and the recommendations contained in the report of the Joint Select Committee of Parliament 
appointed to consider and report on all aspects related to the broadcasting and televising of the proceedings of Parliament, which were established in 1989, were noted. Some of the issues looked at by the 2004 committee included advantages and disadvantages of live broadcasts, editing, simultaneous versus delayed broadcast, package and condensed versions, parliamentary privilege, cost, speaking time, standing orders, ownership of tapes and other material, internet transmission of debates, responsibility for broadcasts, and feedback from the public. Extensive discussions took place on the issues of parliamentary privilege and the legal implications which may come as a result. The committee was of the view, however, that this should not be a deterrent to live broadcasts. After five meetings, the committee put forward six main recommendations with several guidelines. The six main recommendations were that 1. Arrangements be made for full debates and the business of both Houses of Parliament to be transmitted live to the public through the electronic media, television and radio. 2. That an edited, packaged version of the proceedings of both Houses should be provided as a supplementary service. 3. That a standing committee on broadcasting be appointed to oversee the establishment of guidelines and other matters related to the live broadcast of proceedings. 4. That a dedicated channel be set up solely for the purpose of broadcasting parliamentary affairs. In this respect, a collaborative effort between the Parliament and the Government Information Service is required since that division has the necessary equipment and expertise for broadcasting. 5. That an upgrade of IT systems of the Parliament be undertaken to facilitate live transmission via Internet. The Committee agreed that this was an imperative and recommended that this service be made available as soon as possible. 6. That as happens in other jurisdictions in the use of parliamentary privilege, provisions be made whereby aggrieved members of the public, with the approval of the presiding officer, be afforded an opportunity to present a response on record. Additional guidelines for parliamentary broadcasting addressed the use of recordings or film footage, operation of cameras, privilege, the right of reply, and sanctions. With the submission of this report on June 24th, the plans of establishing electronic media dedicated to parliamentary proceedings and events were well underway. It would take a further two years before the first signal would beam from the Parliament's own dedicated frequency. With the report officially laid in Parliament, the onus was now on staff of the Office of the Parliament to bring this project to fruition. After Cabinet approval was obtained, it was then time to implement, and an in-house team for the establishment of a Parliament channel was formed. Tenders went out for supply of equipment broadcast cameras, audio boards, monitors, microphones, and any other tools needed to facilitate a professional-grade broadcast. Concessions were also sought for a broadcast license from the Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago as mandated by law. The next step in the journey was the testing of the channel. For one month before live broadcast began, settings were recorded and rebroadcast to monitor quality of the channel. On August 18, 2006, the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago televised its first live feed of a sitting of the House via a dedicated television channel available to cable subscribers in Trinidad. Soon after, the channel was added to the cable channel lineup in Tobago, and in November of 2007, the Parliament began broadcasting its proceedings via FM radio on a dedicated frequency 105.5 FM. The implementation of the Parliament channel has given more transparency to the proceedings and work of our Parliament and the persons entrusted with our democracy. The work of the channel is bolstered by the social media presence of the Parliament, which has mushroomed in recent years. This provides citizens with round-the-clock access to content across various platforms and technologies. The Parliament also has a YouTube channel, PowerView, which began in 2015. On this channel, members of the public can view live sittings of the House of Representatives, Senate and Joint Select Committee meetings. From concept to inception, the only Caribbean station broadcasting parliamentary content 24 hours a day, the Parliament Channel has been your partner in democracy for 10 years and will be right beside you for many more to come.